Hello, um, everyone. Um, great to see uh, yeah, a bunch of people here interested in five fully automatic installation. Um, and uh, we'll have now a talk um, of, uh, um, yeah, I better look like Rico Voipio from Finland. Um, who will talk about uh, live images for ARM on SBC. SBC stands for uh, Single Board Computers. And um, yeah, a round of applause uh, and welcome here for uh, Rico. Thank you everyone for coming this early in the morning. Anyways, most of you were here for the talk for Thomas Lang, which was here before about fully automated installer. If you weren't, there are uh, papers around here in the ends of the tables that give you a basic idea what the fully automated installer is. So the first question usually we get from people who are getting some kind of single board computer like Raspberry Pi or a 96 ports high keys if they are interested in Debian, they want to have a Debian image for it. They've been experienced that when they install Android or some embedded distribution that they have a live image available for it. Now in Debian, we don't usually do that. We provide an ins uh, installer, but people don't expect to have an installer for these boards if they come from an embedded background. Usually we only get requests for installers from people who are already Debian developers or deeply used to using Debian. Eventually, a user will find a Debian image from somewhere that someone has made and because users have requested it and someone has done it. Usually someone who doesn't work for Debian for their daily job and thus the way of making the image is somewhere hidden. Nobody knows how it was done. Nobody knows where the kernel came from or how to rebuild the kernel or upgrade it. There are some vendor kernel because usually the mainline kernel is not good enough for the board. And there are some random changes into Debian behavior which make it feel less like Debian. Just if the user uses this image for a very long time, they start thinking it's Debian. It's not real Debian anymore. It's something that can install Debian packages, but it doesn't have the feel of using Debian. Now, that's I work for Linaro, and we provide images for some 96 boards platforms, and for our engineers who work on kernel and other stuff and are not really interested in user space sided except for as such something to boot into and to have their tools available on it. And this has been an experience for us as well that the images we make are not exactly very great. We have a, used a tool called Live Build and a custom tool called Linaro Media Create which originated originally from Ubuntu. And neither of these alone is usually enough to make an image but we had a CI script that adds a lot of magic into these images. We had one custom image for every board and the kernel was somehow shoehorned in and you couldn't upgrade it easily except by rebuilding the entire image. So we started thinking that there must be a better way of doing things. Surely this isn't the only way we can support the single board computer users around. So the, at about this time, people started talking about fully automated installer and fully automated installer's disk image tool for building cloud images. And in general, even though fully automated installer has been available for a very long time, using it more in Debian has been a rel relatively new thing. So we were investigating into all these various tools that are available for building disk images in Debian. And I think we found like 20 different tools. And the, I, didn't, I was not able to decide what is technically the best one. So we decided to go the, with the one that is already gaining traction in Debian, which was fully automated installer at this point. 
and to find out how feasible it is to make images for ARM developer boards with it. So a few months later, and indeed it turned out to be a major improvement for us, our CI scripts got a lot shorter, the images are a lot more cleaner, and they are all contained in the Phi configuration we have rather than scattered around in different places. And eventually we were able to make images that work on multiple platforms. This is with some catches. You can't do that on every platform. But when we can do that, we have a kernel that has been installed the regular Debian way with just using the fully automated installer's apt commands. So it's a package there. We have a repository where you can update, update the kernel and apt get upgraded and the configuration gets updated and with one reboot you already have a, your new kernel there. This is something that people who have x86 are used to it, and it's like normal life. But for some ARM, ARM people, it's like, whoa, amazing. So let's have a tour of why this kind of image building is different than, say, more, more complicated than making cloud images or disk images for x86 PCs. The usual case is that makes things hard is that the firmware needs to be on the same uh, image as the root file system and the, all that configuration. And because the ARM SOCs are built so that they load the bootloader from some, say, flash, which is either an eMMC or an SD card or sometimes an SPA flash, it has very little space for the ROM in the SOC to load, so it has a very tight, hard-coded way of where it needs to find the initial bootloader, which then loads the firmware, which is either U-boot or FE or some Android L key. So that in order to support multi-platform images in ARM, we have to have some kind of hardware description included in the firmware. It's either a device tree or, in, or some server systems we have ACPI. And this also needs to be included in the same image as we have the, all the other stuff. And if this is true, then the image has to be hard-coded for this specific platform. Sometimes you can have one image that supports several boards of the same SOC. SOC means system on chip, so it's the core part of an ARM single board computer. But in the more idealistic case, we would have the firmware not included in the image that we are about to build with the fully automated installer. If life would be great, each board would have a separate SPI flash, a bit like how on x86 we have a BIOS on a separate chip. But the SBCs compete very heavily on the price point and adding a single chip adds to the cost and when it's more expensive than the competitors people will just skip buying it. As a workaround I found out that sometimes you could just use the eMMC as a firmware partition and install Debian on the SD card or USB or SATA. If the eMMC is not particularly big like 4 gigabytes it's not a big loss if you just install a few megabytes of the uh, bootloader and stuff there and l leave the rest unused. It's not like a small eMMC is going to be very useful for Debian purposes. If you have an embedded distribution like Open Embedded or Yocto or Buildroot based, then it's just fine. And, but in those cases, you're not really interested in it. And then we have the issue, especially if you want to use this fully automated installer with Debian kernel, is that we use the mainline kernel quite religiously. We don't have the resources to support every single vendor kernel that is available. So if we, but the end users, they already have their boards and they, there is no mainline code yet available. Usually, 
you have to wait for months or even years before the SOC and the board features are all mainlined, if ever. So we need to find a way to provide end users possibility to install their own kernel. So I have created an example image that will be touring a little bit. It should be able to boot any ARM64 board which implements the FE API in their firmware. There's usually it's done by Tiana Core, but these days U-Boot also supports FE and thus we can boot from it. Let's have a look a little bit under. The, on the last talk we already uh, talked about a little bit how the FI is configured and how, what kind of commands you use with it. We have some kind of configuration space which you can also pass directly on the command line. You don't have to necessarily clone it, but I find it usually more convenient to clone the repository and then you can look at the files and explore it before running the actual commands. You don't usually need to add a lot of packages to the system to start running the file build. In case you're on a AMD64 machine, you need to install the QMO user static package to support the cross-building of cross-architecture building of the images. If you're on ARM64 already, you don't need it. There's one catch here. The cross-architecture building does not work if you have already configured your uh, x86 PC to support cross-compiling because then you have the, uh, the ARM64 architecture in the foreign architectures. Then we have the usual list of classes that are describe the image. In case you were not on the previous talk, these are the ingredient kind of Lego bricks that describe what is going to be included in this image and by adding or removing these variables in the command line, you can have one configuration space that supports several different kind of images. So in this simplified configuration space, we have a handful of directories and then the list of various files that these variables will refer to. We see in the class directory, we have files that describe variables and these class usually Every single time there's a, this caps lock file name, it refers to the uh, class variable we gave in the command line in the previous slide. I will go through these quite quickly since it was already passed through in the previous talk. We set variables in classes. The disk conf, deb, deb conf directory describes things that packages that use debconf will use. In this case, we pretty much only set the email. The disk config will describe how the system is partitioned. The setup storage man page has excellent examples and descriptions how to do this. And in the package config directories, we describe what packages each of these classes will install on the targeted image. Finally, in the scripts, we do things that need to be hacked into the place that can't be... It, it's so easily a, a place where you get tempted to do a lot of things that you wouldn't need to do in packaging, but usually if you just can do things, you should put them in packages and install them packages to the system rather than try to edit the root file system from the scripts. So, a little bit about the future. One really annoying thing about using any kind of images, whether they are for ARM or x86, or even in this case in Windows, is that usually every image has a hard-coded password. And this is kind of terrible for the entire security of Internet even if we think that the users of our images would be 
smart and not put them into the public internet, they might do it anyways. How do we get rid of the passwords? Does anyone have good ideas? Uh, put SSH keys was suggested. Well, that works if the people are only going to SSH in, but sometimes people will want to have an image where they log in from the serial console or even from the cons uh, having a graphical user interface. Yeah, then they will still have the same password distributed all around. So something we've been talking about for quite a while, but uh, you know, what no one has yet done, to my knowledge, is actually sorting out a first boot set of things. So you can generate yourself an image that doesn't have a SSH keys, doesn't have a password and whatever, and on first boot we'll go through and ask these kinds of questions. Um, you know, so you can make what, what I've heard called an OEM image or you know, you know, an, a pre-installed image that can do the right thing. Um, it shouldn't need a lot of work, but I'm not aware of anybody doing it yet. Indeed, but this is something that we need to definitely do to not only make Debian better, but internet better by having less bots available. And then we have the issue that even if I make these images, they're still going to be Rikus images and not still Debian images. So I believe that our end users deserve already built ARM images and we should start making them. So we should start building a CI loop that builds them out the same way that we built Debian installer. Having a generic image and perhaps uh, some custom bi builds for a few platforms which are popular enough to make it justified. And then get someone's official stamp for it, probably Steve's. Thanks. Any other questions? You, you've mentioned before that there are the, the ARM bots do not only need the raw um, format, but some different. Can you explain this again? So, in some cases, people, though the board does not have an bootable, removable SD card media or uh, USB media, but the board will only boot from its internal flash and you have to update this internal flash somehow. Usually the standard way of doing is this is with Android fast boot, where you have a USB connected to, from your PC to the single board computer and the Android fast boot has the protocol for uploading images that will be flashed to specific partitions the format is called Android sparse images, which kind of try to make the images smaller by slicing off the pieces which are empty, which is usually the entire ending of the image. So what we have been doing is that we take the rootfs partition from the Phi image and then run it through the tool called sim2emg. No sound. So, absolutely, yes, we probably should be doing some of these images. How big are the ones you're making at the moment? About 500 megs. Okay. How long do they take to build? Depends if the packages are on cache or not, but it's okay. Going so, to assuming be they are, it should be fairly fast. Less than a minute. Awesome. So, as as you saw, the image is created by Thomas. It's the same speed. Sure. And how many, how many different boards would you want to support? That's a big question. Sure. So absolutely, it, um, I'd love to do some more of these and we should talk afterwards. You know, we can happily have these building on the official you know, image build machine we've already got going. Um, it then just comes down to logistics and working out the right set of things to do. Um, the thing I don't want to do is, be, is to have a full set of every desktop for every, t every type right. of board out there and we end up with 400,000 things and no one can ever test them or find the right image. But if we can come up with a good set, yeah, job done, let's just do it. Thanks. 
I think we are running out of the time, so thank you everyone for joining.